and welcome back to another episode of Extreme Lifestyle Living Podcast, and I am in my zone today. I find with these podcasts, I've been really flowing and getting into my groove with them. They're they're such a big positive passion for mine, you know, like doing these podcasts is just me with my my couple ideas that I want to talk about, bring some light to some mental health issues, how you guys can grow, how you guys can get forward, forward in your life, and the biggest thing with me personally is... It's all just straight up coming from the heart. There's nothing that I'm coming on these episodes and talking about that's made up. And there's nothing that I haven't experienced on these that I haven't talked about or anything I'm talking about, sorry, I, that I haven't experienced personally. And to get such a natural, organic growth and love and support from everybody for this podcast is absolutely amazing. And I think that's what makes makes it the most enjoyable is that I feel like you're literally listening to me being in my own pocket of time entirely by myself and just being honest, talking about things I've been through, talking about like these uh, topics and then my firsthand experiences, my my education that I've, I've gotten through my life, through these experiences and takeaways, tools, the resources, everything. And honestly, I just fucking love it. I just love it. I just fucking love it. It's crazy. It just like gives me an immense amount of energy and I can't compare it to the gym. I can't compare it to anything else. And eventually one day I'll be on a big stage platform talking about these exact same topics, but in a group of people. Start off small, you know, obviously 5, 10, a couple hundred. Well, obviously, not, that's not small, but, you know, I got a goal. I would like to have the Halifax Metro Center sold out, me speaking, talking about mental health, talking about mindset, chilling, everything, you know, because that's what, that's what I'm really in this in this field for is the mindset, as you guys all know. And before I start going on a hell of a lot of rants and rambles about mental health and mindset, let's jump into today's topic for this podcast, which is the daily disciplines you must stick to in order to succeed in your life and to see success in your life. Not only the daily disciplines you must stick to to see these successes in your life, but to steadily be growing and moving forward as well. These daily disciplines we're going to be talking about are not only going to make sure you set your future up for success and make it inevitable, but it's also going to give you a hell of a lot of confidence on how you can know and make sure you're reassured that you're steadily moving forward and growing. So I'm going to talk about the daily disciplines that are crucial to set up your life for success and help you in achieving your goals and make progress towards your life desire so you know you can truly live the life you deserve. So let's just jump right into it. The first daily discipline that is critical to your success is waking up at the same damn time every day and the same with going to bed at the same damn time every day. This consistency helps to regulate your body's internal clock and optimizes your sleep quality, which can significantly impact your overall health and well-being. You're less anxious, less depressed, higher energy to be more optimistic versus being sluggish in a negative mindset. And I know this can be hard, especially when you're busy and maybe you don't get home till literally 11 p.m. at night, but it's crucial at the very minimum to wake up at the same time every single day because the body is in a is, is in an amazing machine. It's It just needs that consistency. So some sort of consistency with this is critical for your success. And a few actionable items to take away to help execute on this discipline to establish a regular bedtime and a wake-up time. And to stick to it is to, here's a few of them. One is to avoid electronic devices for the last hour before your bed. Shut your phone off, put it in a drawer away from you, or put it in the room while you're in the living room watching Netflix, whatever it may be. It's really crucial to like get off all these electronics an hour before you go to bed, even if it's a half hour, but an hour optimally would be great because it's it's like there's actual scientific evidence proving that the the blue lights, the different types of uh, stimulants from the phones are really screwing up our, our biochemistry, right? Making us stay awake. And on top of that, create a relaxing bedtime routine such as reading a book or doing some stretching to help you unwind and slow down a bit. Like to me personally, I love yoga. Reading, like I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I do it every night. Like I honestly like I do a lot better reading in the morning, but I like I find reading really like actually unwinds my brain, slows it down a bit. But I do struggle with keeping that discipline at night. So I'm, I am here preaching just as I am just as human as you are. But uh, those are like reading a book or doing some yoga to help unwind and slow down a bit or to help like even to help wake up more easily. Try placing your alarm clock or phone across the room so you have to physically get up to out of your bed to, uh, to turn it off. Now, I won't lie. <laughs> this may piss you off a bit, but it'll work. So consistency is key. So try to maintain this routine even on the weekends. And this is where it gets crucial too, especially being like an online coach and having like a handful of clients I'm talking to every single day. And any of, your, any of my clients listening to this right now, this is not a personal attack at you, but... I say it all the time, we're absolute crushing it Monday to Wednesday, and then come Thursday to Saturday, a lot of us lose momentum and kind of like lose our grounding. So the difference between an entirely new level of life is only a few weekends away of grinding that much harder. So let's fucking go. 
The second discipline is having a solid morning routine and nighttime routine that serves you. Now, I talked about that a little bit with being consistent with going to bed and waking up at the same time, but that's a little bit different. That's literally what I was talking about, your sleep patterns. Now, I'm talking about the morning routine and nighttime routine that serves you to keep these sleep patterns installed into your life. So this includes like journaling, reading in the morning to set up to set the tone for the day, having a self-care routine like showering, brushing your teeth, moisturizing. And all this goes for the same at nighttime as, as with the morning routine, right? It's self-care routine, some yoga, reading, whatever you, whatever makes you feel like you slow down a little bit, relax the most, whatever makes you feel centered and wholesome, like double down on that. That's what you really need to really need to like get in tune with. So a morning routine that when you wake up, you feel great and kind of feels like, okay, cool. Like I shook out, like, you know, moving your body is always great for the morning and getting a hell of a lot of like, um, I get ice cold water, try to get ice cold water as soon as you wake up. And the same thing with nighttime, like something that makes you feel slowed down and resonates and makes you feel centered and wholesome. So one actionable item to execute on this is to create a morning and evening routine that you enjoy and that you actually look forward to. That was the biggest min- misconception for me making all this uh, changes in my life was I thought I had to do certain things to get to certain places, which is right to a certain degree. However, when it comes to smaller aspects of your life, not smaller because I don't want to devalue what we're talking about, but when it comes to these types of things, it is very hard to find it out because it's on you. I can't tell you what works for you. You can't tell me what works for me. You just got to figure it out for yourself. So I'm giving you my experiences of what works for me. So in the morning, try starting your day off with some light stretches or some form of self-care routine to help you feel energized and focused. For me, it's doing my journal routine and writing down my goals for the day, which you all know is my favorite. That is, and you do that with some intention and you're literally on another level. I do that. I also go aside and I try to get, uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit down in the podcast. I try to get at least... Um, 10 to 15 minutes of light exposure outside. I try to sit outside on my back deck before I have my coffee and just really get some heat. So not some heat, but like the sun in my face, sun in my eyes, move a little bit, stretch, and uh, then I get into my day, right? So that's my morning routine. And at nighttime, like just like the biggest things for me at nighttime is like avoid screen time. You know, like that's the biggest thing is avoid being on your phone, for your phone, scrolling, text messaging, anything like that. But when it comes to nighttime, like I still struggle with this every day, to be honest. So the biggest piece of feedback I got for you is incorporate something you find relaxing, like stretching or reading, but whatever resonates with you the most. And then keep it simple and double down on it. That's straight up all you need to do. Double down on whatever resonates with you. That's why I'm trying to read at nighttime. I find it really helps slow down my brain. I get out of my entire life and into whatever book I'm reading, whether it's nonfiction, whether it's fiction, whether it's like, you know, whatever it is. I find it just really helps me. So that's me. Some people love like, you know, meditating. They put some candles up, put some slow music on. I used to do that, do that as well. As you could tell in the morning, I'm very structured near the end of the day, end of the day, battling ADHD and other issues. Like you just, it's hard to stay structured. That's speaking from experience, right? Which is why I'm being honest. But the morning routine and nighttime routine, keep it simple. And whatever it is that resonates with you, double down on it, both of it, period. The third discipline is exercising and moving your body with intention for a minimum of at least four solid times a week. So obviously move your body every single day, but I'm talking about at least four hard training sessions where you break a good amount of sweat four times a week because exercise is not just keeps you physically fit, but it also releases a hell of a lot of endorphins that boost your mood and mental health. Working out was one of the main reasons I managed my personal depression and show for myself every single fucking day. So it's more than just getting big muscles, veiny arms, shredded, losing body fat percentage. It's about showing up for your fucking self every single day. That is an entirely way for you solely to better your life. No one else's no one else is benefiting from it. You show up every single fucking day relentlessly. You choose to do these exercises. You choose to do these movements. You choose to do these challenges. And when you crush any of these fucking goals and any of these fields that we're talking about, it is the most rewarding and fulfilling thing. So that's why it's important not to just to quote unquote move your body, but to do it with intention. And that's a, that goes both ways. You know, I have a lot of athletes I train that they go to the gym four or five times a week and they think that that's all they need to do. You know, I'm in there, I'm doing compounds and doing my hypotrophy work. I'm doing everything I need to do. So I don't need to do anything else. And then what they fail to realize is they're not recovering as much as they can. They're not doing the daily disciplines like walking their body. Like, yeah, sure, you can deadlift 315 pounds or 405 or hang clean, squat like 315, 275, all these crazy numbers or any these crazy goals. But your hips are out of alignment because you don't even do basic walks. You get 2K steps a day. You know, same with the people that work shift work, right? Like, or like crazy schedules where they can only get maybe three solid days in the gym and then they're they're like, 
like, oh, I'm not going to do anything all week then. And it's like, okay, no, you still walk every day. You know, you still be mindful of your morning routine, nighttime routine. You still move your body within reason. But the kicker is to really have, like, those, the balance between the both. Move your body every day because you're fucking a human and you're meant to, but also do it with intention so you can challenge yourself to not only physically grow, but mentally show that you're showing up for yourself to better your motherfucking life. So... Find any exercise routine that you enjoy, whether it's running, hitting the gym, yoga, anything where you're moving and being active. The key is to start by committing to it, no matter how small, even if it's just a few minutes of this exercise each day, and gradually increase the duration and intensity over time. The biggest thing that I have with my business is fat loss. Everybody wants veins. Everybody wants to be shredded. Everybody wants to lose fat. But the thing that they don't realize is it takes time you get physical results in the gym like they say beginner gains beginner this in the gym for muscle mass and muscle anatomy but when it comes to metabolism it comes to shredding fat this is the thing that takes the most amount of time every single day and i tell my clients and tell people that ask me oh how do i get in good shape how do i get in pain free how do i lose all this body if i do this i tell them i've been doing this for 15 years eight years religiously you know so it's like it's all about starting committing doesn't matter if it's two minutes eventually it'll be 50 minutes just fucking do it today now like i said i'm not saying don't change your entire life but work your way gradually and get better each motherfucking day so the fourth discipline is eating a balanced diet of whole foods high in protein the food you consume provides the fuel for your body and it's true what they say you become what you eat so you got to have a plenty of fresh vegetables fresh fruits Lean proteins, healthy fats, all of these got to be into your incorporated into your diet so you can nourish your body. Now, I know it's hard as fuck at the beginning, especially when you're an emotional eater, because I know I am. So again, like I said, I'm like about the exercise, just get better each day and don't give up. And again, I'm not going to deny the fact of education, you know, and support like me, I grew up very uneducated with food, I never had any home cooked meals, it was always like oven made food, microwavable foods, all these different things. So it's like, the biggest thing I want to say before I continue is like on top of being an emotional eater, a lot of when it comes to eating whole foods is uneducation. You're inexperienced with this avenue of your life, so you just get a little insecure. And that's why I'm saying same as the exercise, just focus on being better by the day. Because a healthy diet can improve your entire physical and mental performance beyond your dreams. You just need to know the right avenues that serve you. So to start, I would start to include things like meal prepping on the weekends and midweek to have more prepared foods to reduce stopping for takeout. This would help you get more towards home cooked meals, which are more whole foods. That's a huge step in the right direction. Another easy one is to make a grocery list before heading to the store so you can buy your foods with intention, planning on the right foods. So that way you don't look for like, oh, like this is microwavable or this is the pizza that's on sale. It's like, no, you have intention, you have a plan, you know what you're doing. So that way you can start to like mitigate those risks of falling off your plan and varying off a very left or varying right keeps you centered and calm and right where you need to be and i know this one may sound like common sense but legit just avoid processed foods and sugary drinks if it's the difference between subway and mcdonald's i think you know what you need to do you know what i mean same with cake or fruit at the office it's the same thing you know you need to do so a rule of thumb is that i usually tell everybody is if the ingredients of your foods have more than five ingredients total probably getting into the more of the processed bullshit realm and that's just a harsh reality. Now, I know that's being very picky, but it just, it's just straight up honest. Like nutrition is simple. Same with working out. It's simple. But with today's day and age of marketing and emotional states of people and stress levels, it's, it's, made to make, it's made to be made into something it's not for both of those avenues. So start small. Get better than the day before. And like I said, like the two things I just said above are crucial for getting started with meal prepping or uh, getting healthier foods. That's meal prepping. So you're actually prepared and then buying food with intention, you know, then that's why I added a little, the little jargon on education, because that's what a lot of people do with that, with their food is they just shy away from getting it better because they're just uneducated. They're unsure of what to do, you know? So that's my take on the food. So I'll jump into the last one. And the fifth daily discipline is my personal favorite, which is growing your mindset and challenging yourself to push limits. You got to have a growth mindset, which is the belief that you can develop your abilities through dedication and hard fucking work. It's so important to adopt this mindset and consistently challenge yourself to take on new challenges and push past your comfort zone or all the other daily disciplines are not going to matter. Do you want to know why? Because if you shut the fuck up about your emotions and I'm not denying them, there's a subtle difference here. I can still tell you to shut up about your emotions without denying them. I'm still validating how you feel. I'm just saying shut the fuck up about it. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. But if you can just shut them up for a second, 
you can see that you are in a lot more capable and a lot more control of building this crazy life of your dreams. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, and this is this was hard for me to admit or accept because I'm a very emotional person. I've been through a lot with my life and I care a lot more than I've been hurt, which is a lot. And they say emotions are fake because they are entirely based off of your perception of what you think you understand. I'm going to say that one more time. Your emotions are fake because you have created them entirely based off of how you are perceiving a situation, whether what at, that has happened or is currently happened, that you are perceiving it based off the way you think you understand it. The emotions we bring up in ourselves daily are engineered to be brought up based on how we perceive the things around us. So if you think it's not going to work out and you're perceiving a situation as a daunting as a daunting negative task, the emotions are going to be aligned with that and they're going to be ready to fire. Meaning you're going to be quick to draw the negativity. You're going to be meaning to fold under pressure of the adversities. And this is where I love it. If you think it will work out, you think you will win, these gaps that you think are daunting and are like, oh my God, failures, these gaps are actually opportunities. The emotions that align with this will be ready to fire, meaning that you'll be ready to take that opportunity. You'll be ready to open your mouth and raise your hand and ask for help. And the reason why I'm saying that is because even as simple as this, and this is where like a lot of you guys know I get passionate about this stuff and I'm going to go back to get my master's in biochemistry. And it's because you can go as far as this and get into and get, get into the factual information of how humans perceive their emotions. So let's talk about anxiety and excitement. So on a neurology and a biological level, for the most part, they're connected to the same neurology, the same neurons, meaning they, they fire the same circuits in our brains as anxiety and excitement. But as kids and as adults, we become anxious, we become nervous. So we convince ourselves that we are we aren't excited anymore because it's it's more of anxiety, you know what I mean? As a kid, like you're excited. You have your your the animosity of, you know, you're going to hang with your friends, maybe you got something new for your birthday or you got that new toy. You're fucking thrilled, you know? And then as we become adults and as life happens, you know, you get either like like life happens, you know, you get a bad breakup or you get bullied or a traumatic event happens in your life or, you know, something happens at home, like whatever it may be, you just get knocked down a peg. And then over the like, you know, say it happens at eight years old, 12 years old, 14 years old, 17 years old. Now you're 22 years old, maybe you're 30 years old and you had six or seven big mental downshifts into your confidence or your life. So now you're when you get excited, you're actually rewiring that neuron and that neurology to be anxious. And now you've convinced you convinced yourself with this negative thought pattern that you now need to be negative all the time. So that's why I say emotions aren't real. Because if I wanted to sit here and say the way I perceived the world based on how I understood it was real, I would have been dead ten years ago. And that's just straight up fucking being honest. So, anyways, I could talk about this forever. So I'll stop right here, but I hope this fucking helps because I'm going to read it one more time. The emotions we bring up in ourselves daily are engineered to be brought up based on how we perceive the things around us. They say emotions are fake because they are entirely based off of our perception of what we think we understand. So change your perspective, change your lane, of course, pivot, keep motherfucking growing. So I'm going to stop right there. Okay. So being mindful of avoiding the victim mindset that blames external factors for your lack of progress and take ownership over your life. Okay. It's not, it's, it's always on you to keep you in check. So you got to understand where your emotions are. So to ensure you are consistently growing and learning, you need to start seeking out new challenges and opportunities. You got to set ambitious goals for yourself. Like dream big. I'm like, be a fucking kid with this. Like close your eyes. Where do you want to be with your life? You know what I mean? Like life truly can be as good as you want it to be. If you fucking believe it. I've had a conversation with um, Emma the last few days. We've been talking about miracles. Like, do you believe in miracles? And yes, I fucking do. Because if I didn't believe in miracles, I would not be sitting here. You know what I mean? I would not be motherfucking sitting here. I've been through a lot in my life. And I'm only 28. And I feel like I, like I was always told I had an old soul. And I won't get too deep into, you know, religion or spirituality, shit like that. But what I will say is there's more energy out there to be aligned with in a good way if you choose to believe with it if you and that's why i say if you fucking believe it it'll happen if you don't believe it it won't happen so the most important thing about this is all you have to do is believe and persist through the obstacles and failures practice positive self-talk work on your internal dialogue to align with you and being positive and in a growth mindset versus a victim mentality and a debbie downer you know focus on your strengths rather than your weaknesses if shit hits the fan take responsibility for it Take responsibility for your actions and choices and acknowledge that you have the power to change your fucking life. As you can tell, the last daily discipline is when everything comes to 
together and being successful and steadily growing is, in life is a huge passion of mine. So I'm always going to ramble about mindset. I'm always going to say you taking ownership over your day and making sure you get the daily disciplines to make sure you're growing in the avenues that you want is always going to be the biggest thing because without mindset, nothing else matters. If you don't like you're, you're driving the car of your life. It doesn't matter what kind of wheels you got on. It doesn't matter what kind of car, the color of the paint is. It doesn't matter if you got a, a huge truck, a, a, a Lamborghini or a fucking limousine or whatever it may be because it doesn't matter if the driver isn't driving it appropriately. You know what I mean? So I'm going to end it off right there because I'm honestly going to go on 10, 10 fucking rants about mindsets and I don't want to do that. So I feel like I've been structured. I've been calm, collect, excited. So I'm going to stop right there. So there you have it for today's episode, okay? Incorporate these daily disciplines into your life so you can make a significant impact on your success and growth. So to reiterate them before I go, number one is to wake up and go to bed at consistent times. That's number one daily discipline to serve your life to get to you success you deserve. Number two is have a solid morning and nighttime routine that serves you. Number three, exercise regularly. Don't be a little baby back, bitch. Show up for yourself relentlessly. Number four, eat a balanced diet that fuels you for your goals and aligns with you. And last but not least, my personal favorite, which ties all the other ones together, is to adopt a growth and winning motherfucking mindset. By sticking to these habits consistently, you can build a foundation for success and a fulfilling life way beyond your fucking dreams. But it starts with you. Now go get after it and take action today. Let's fucking go. <laughs>